Amanda. I'm a prospecting geologist, educator, and communication specialist with my company, Ignite Education, based in St. John's. I have a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Education from Memorial University and a Master's Certificate in Project Management from the Schulich School of Business with York University. You can learn more about me through the link in the video description below. As a prospecting geologist, a large part of my time is spent in the field. So here's some of the tools of the trade in which I might carry with me. Uh, a backpack. I carry my field fenced, which has lots of pockets for carrying all of my belongings. For navigation, I carry with me a GPS unit as well as my geological maps. I have a Brunton compass, which is used for taking measurements on the rocks, as well as the mirror doubles as a signaling device. I carry with me a lot of safety equipment, our PPE. So glasses for when we're collecting samples. I have an emergency kit, as well as a first aid kit. For when I also want to collect samples, I have sample bags and a marker so I can record the location for where the sample was taken. I also carry with me a hand lens, which allows me to look at the minerals and rock, the minerals and the rocks a little more closely, and my uh, pocket knife, which also allows me to test the hardness of some samples, and a notebook to be able to record my observations. Do you know what's in your stuff and where it comes from? And did you know that rocks make up the Earth's crust, and these rocks are made up of minerals? Minerals are the building blocks of rocks, and there's over 5,500 minerals. Newfoundland and Labrador is host to some world-class mineral deposits. Every single thing that you use in your day-to-day -day life has come from a mined product. So if it hasn't been grown, it has to have come from a mine. So let's have a closer look at some of these minerals. Quartz is a silicate. It's a common rock-forming mineral. We have two colored varieties here. The purple variety is known as amethyst in this white version. Uh, quartz is used for the manufacturing of glass, such as in windows or bottles. It's used for optical lenses, abrasives, and even sandpaper. It's also important in electrical components, including in your television, cell phones, and video games. Here we have calcite. Calcite is a carbonate. Uh, its formula is CaCO3. So if you even look at items such as toothpaste, uh, you'll notice that the first ingredient, it says, uh, is calcium carbonate. It's also used in the construction industry. It's used for mortars, cement, and steel. It's also used in glass making, paper, as well as plastics, uh, and rubber. Here we have some examples of micas, uh, two varieties. One is muscovite, which is this nice, clear, transparent version, and as well as the darker version known as biotite. Muscovite, uh, because of its high heat and electrical insulating properties, that uh, greatly contributes to what it's used for. It is used as a uh, industrial heat insulator. Muscovite is often used in paints and cosmetics, and if you take a look at the eyeshadow, this is what adds that shimmer and sparkle to eyeshadow as well as uh, other cosmetics that it gets used in. Here we have Labradorite. Labradorite is also the provincial mineral emblem for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. It's a silicate, and because of its beautiful blue color um, and its iridescent features, it's used from, for, using, for making gemstones, jewelry, uh, building stones, or dimension stones. Here we have magnetite. Magnetite's an oxide. Um, it gets its name because of its special property. It's attracted to a magnet. It uh, has a nice metallic luster, which means it looks like a, me uh, a metal, and uh, it's used to manufacture steel as well as pig iron. Pyrite, commonly known as fool's gold, um, has a very distinct uh, cubic form, crystal form. It's used uh, for mining so its uh, sulfur content, and it's used to produce sulfuric acid. Gypsum is used to manufacture a variety of construction materials, including wallboard, or its common brand uh, known as chip rock, cement, and plaster. It's used to make fertilizer, chalk, crayons, uh, a paint filler. It's also a thickening agent to produce tofu, and powdered gypsum, or plaster of Paris, is used to make a uh, cast in the medical industry. Fluorite is 
a critical mineral and it has really many important industrial uses. It's used mostly in the manufacturing of chemicals, in particular hydrofluoric acid. Um, it's also used in ceramics and it's a flux in making steel and aluminum. It's also used in high performance materials and flame retardant apparel. Sphalerite is the main zinc ore, and zinc is a critical mineral. It's used in alkaline batteries, um, it's used in zinc oxide, which would be in cream such as diaper rash. It's used in lotions such as calamine lotions, sunscreens, as well as nutritional uh, supplements. It's also used for galvanizing metals. So what does that mean? It means it prevents rusting and corrosion. So our iron and steel nails get galvanized or coated with zinc. Chain link fences are also commonly galvanized or coated with zinc um, to, to help prevent rusting. And it's also added to copper to form the metal alloy brass. So zinc is also a main component in brass. Hematite is the main mineral of iron. So we have two varieties. This is the shiny metallic version known as specular hematite. And here is the earthy uh, variety of hematite. Um, regardless of if it's an earthy or a metal finish, it's still used for making iron. So it's used to make steel and pig iron. It's also used for wrought iron, cast iron, as well as nutritional supplements and in making blueprints. Perophyllite, um, it's a silicate mineral. It has, again, many, many uses, including the filler in paints, rubber, um, plastics, as well as ceramics. It's used in insecticides, epoxy resins, uh, different sorts of mortars and bricks. It's also used to make cements, sealants, and fiberglass. Barite is the main barium mineral and it has many industrial uses. It's used in drilling fluids or muds in the petroleum industry. It also gets crushed and it's used as a filler to make paints as well as plastics and uh, paper, rubber, and cosmetics. It's also used in the pharmaceutical industry and uh, it's used in diagnostic medical imaging tests. Stibnite is the main mineral of antimony, and antimony is again a critical metal. It's used to make flame retardant materials, many different synthetic fibers, beverages, and food containers, and small amounts are even used in ceramics as well as in your television. Galena is the main lead ore. Um, lead is used to make car batteries, ceramic glazes, lead weights, lead crystals, paint, and it also gets uh, commonly used and mixed with other metals to make solder. And chalcopyrite is an incredibly important mineral. Um, it's a critical mineral and it's the main uh, metal for copper. Essential to technology, innovation, aerospace, and of course national security. It's widely used to make electrical wiring. It's used to make plumbing and piping materials, uh, generators, coins, cookware, roofing, brass, fertilizer, windmills, electric cars, and it's gonna be critical to the green energy transition. Thanks for joining me to learn about the importance of minerals in daily life. Remember, if it hasn't been grown, it has to have come from a mine. Check out the link below for an at-home activity.